Hi there, Kelsey Toner here from Be A Better Guide and the Online Tourism Academy. We're so excited to share a brand new interview series with you here today, Pivoting Online, Success Stories and Inspiration. We've had one of our Online Tourism Academy students, Miranda Peterson, who also runs her own successful hiking and yoga tour company down in Asheville, North Carolina, to kick things off by finding seven innovative entrepreneurs who are finding tremendous success in serving their customers online. Through these interviews, we dive into the secret sauce behind the success that they're having, the practical advice that they would share for someone wanting to follow in their footsteps, and maybe some of the things that they would do differently. Stick around to the end to learn more about how we can help you create, launch, and sell your own online experiences, and we hope you enjoy. Yeah. Sure. So uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Devour Tours, and we started offering food tours in Madrid in 2012. Um, and I have two, uh, two business partners, one's from Spain and, and a woman from the United States, we're actually married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we started in 2012, and really just our kind of mission was to help people connect with the city that we'd fallen in love with, uh, which was Madrid, and understand, understand the stories, eat in the best places, um, meet the people who are making great food, and, and to support those places as well. So we started in Madrid, then we expanded through Spain, uh, and in 2019, mm -hmm. uh, we expanded outside Spain for the first time, so across Europe uh, into Rome, uh, Lisbon, Paris, and London. Um, so we're a European-wide food tour operator now. Uh, at first, we actually didn't pivot into online experiences. Uh, there's a period, probably for the first sort of month or, or two, three weeks, you know, after lockdown, when you're trying to figure out what is this, how long is this going to be for? You've got to figure out your financial situation. You know, what's our runway? How long have we got? Um, we actually released a, a, an ebook, a cookbook, uh, that a lot of the guides and, and team members put recipes into, and that actually sold really well. Um, and so that was our first step, and that was easier to put together than a whole online yeah. kind of um, experience thing. But we started, we moved into online. It was interesting. There were some operators saying, you know, don't go there. Others saying it's working for us or we're going there. Uh, but we decided to give it a go. We, we tested a little bit first before we started offering paid events by doing uh, more Facebook Lives mm -hmm. uh, just to get a sense of the energy around it and learn. And those were free. And then we moved into doing, uh, you know, paid cooking classes or uh, paid, obviously people pay to do them, uh, mm -hmm. cooking classes, online experiences, um, not all cooking, you know, the history of Portugal and 10 dishes, things like that, live from the guides' homes in the cities they're in. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, like everybody, it's been a journey of, of kind of figuring out what works, what doesn't, um, and it's got its ups and downs, but it's certainly been certainly been interesting, and I think, you know, it will certainly be with us even when travel returns, the online experiences. You know, it's interesting. One of the challenges, obviously, with travel is that you have to actually physically be in a place. So, mm -hmm. you know, online cooking classes are not new. There's companies that were offering them before COVID. Uh, so it would be interesting how that could be an additional uh, line of business within um, within on the ground tours, you know, to supplement the kind of the customer journey. Going from offline to online, like learning the technology and learning how to adapt mm -hmm. everything, what was that process like? Yeah, not, not too bad. Uh, we kind of put someone in charge of figuring it out, kind of just setting it up um, and then teaching others how to do it. So right. it wasn't too bad. I think for the guides, uh, you know, I haven't led one of our paid uh, online experiences as a guide, but I've done the, you know, the Facebook, I've cooked live and things like that when we first started. And the challenge is you don't get the feedback loop um, from from your guests that you get when you're looking at someone's face and they smile or they look bored or whatever it is. So, so I think that's hard for guides. Um, you feel like you're a singing and dancing monkey to, into a vacuum, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think the big lesson there is just keep going, keep it big. It doesn't look too big on camera. It's the energy. You've got to bring the energy and kind of like turn it up to 11. Yeah, I think what's interesting, you need to think about it almost if you step back and think about the experience of doing a tour in person, you have, you know, the different connection kind of points. You connect with the guests. Mm -hmm. uh, the guests connect with the destination. They're walking around. They're looking at Madrid. They're touching Madrid. They're tasting Madrid. Mm -hmm. um, and they connect with each other as well. You know, they chat with each other when, they're, when you're walking between stops on a food tour or whatever it is. So it's a social experience for the guests. So I think when you think about online, you have to think, um, 
Okay, well, what did, if we think of that as like a matrix, what did we just lose by going online? Like they can look at me and I'm singing and dancing. I can see them, although they're not respond, they're not used, they don't realize that they have to smile. Yeah. Because when you're looking at someone talking, you There's smile like, and you give those cues, right? And they're just like looking at you and like, oh my yeah. God, they hate me. Um, because they're, we're not socialized to, to realize that when we're looking at the computer screen, we're not kind of presenting to the world in the same way. So, uh, and they're not connecting with each other in the same way. So there, you have to think about as a guide, how can you create those connections um, or at least amplify them uh, in a way that uh, makes it a more dynamic experience given that it's inherently more one dimensional. Mm -hmm. And so how do you make that more interactive? Do you do like questions or trivia mm -hmm. or ask them to show what they're cooking or how do you do that? Yeah, exactly. Show what what are you cooking? Bring it up to us. You know, you know trivia. People love the polls on Zoom. It's always like when you're we're so we're so basic as humans in so many ways. You kind of put a few polls in and just you throw up a poll and everyone gets excited. Mm -hmm. um, I've had an ex interesting experience of when you're on a, a live ex event. Um, when I'm moderating, we we moderate ours, uh, so we have someone supporting the guide. It's interesting when somebody else speaks, you know, a guest speaks, the energy just raises uh, or, or increases in the room um, than if it's just the guide speaking. And I think that you just feel it change because suddenly it becomes the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know what that is, but it just shows that you have to get the guests talking as much mm -hmm. as possible. And there'll always be a few people who are open to that. Uh, try and encourage people to turn their, their screens on, their cameras on. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you just have to get them involved as much as possible. Um, and if they all look bored, they're probably not. They might just be really focused on enjoying what you're doing. But you don't want to beg. Never yeah. beg, right? Guys, I, I watched one experience with another company at one point where we were kind of seeing how other people were doing it. I felt like the guy got to the point which is like, please speak to me, people. And you have to, you don't go that far, right? Yeah. That, that looked sad. Yeah. Oh, that's, a, that's another really good point. Um, so did you look at other, you seem like you did some research, went to other yeah. experiences online, kind of like, okay, here's what I think would work for us. Here's what probably mm -hmm. wouldn't. Here's what, you know, yeah. other places could do better. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, you know, other colleagues who run other companies um, jumped on their tours and had a look. Everybody was kind of learning. Everybody's kind of learning from each other. And, you know, I think people sometimes get weird if they're going to go on a competitor's thing, like, oh, I have to be secret about it. Well, it's like, like, it's almost better to call those things out, you know, and just mm -hmm. say, hey, I, I jumped on your experience. It was really cool. Like, you know, there's no true real secrets, right? <laughs> yeah. In the end, the, the secret source is just like being great. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's no like, there's not a lot beyond that. It's like, so we all know, you know, what each other's doing. But I think people just approach it differently. Some people don't have a moderator. Uh, they just have the guide there. Some people do have a moderator role. Um, and it's just kind of how you want to set that up. Mm -hmm. And we haven't changed too much. We have reduced supply mm -hmm. so that we focus uh, bookings into a few experiences rather than having a million experiences that we're yeah. offering because you know like anything like on a tour you want to you want to fill that experience um so we re we've reduced supply that's been important uh learning about time zones you know when do people want to take it um i think one of the traps is if one person tell in australia says oh we want to do it at you know this time because the time you're doing it's 9 a.m for us well we've, we've sort of said okay we'll do the australian one and then you know two australians turn up and it's like well that's not that's not sustainable mm -hmm. so i think early on you're in that hustle phase where you're just like if someone wants one at 9 a.m you'll do it at 9 a.m we've done like pasta classes at 9 a.m mm -hmm. um but that's not where our market is you know most of the people who take our, to, uh, our experiences are in the states so we're just going to keep serving that so i don't think a lot has changed in terms of the content i think they were really good from the kickoff um i think it's just about you know, they're trying to trying to market them and get them out to as many people as possible. Um, we're all limited somewhat. I, every company is limited by its mar its email list and mm -hmm. um, and its audience. And because like a cooking class could become a commodity mm -hmm. and not something unique, I think you're always thinking, well, how can we make sure that we're sh selling what what is unique about this or what is special about this? I think one of the things that have always been key about a devour tour is it's not just about the food. Uh, you know, we use the food as a vehicle for helping people understand culture and history. And so in our experiences, we work in those things. It's not just a cooking class. It's a way 
our paella experience is not just about how to cook a paella. It's about, you know, where is this dish from? What are the ingredients? Tell us about that. What's the culture of it? What's the, you know, what's the history of it? And so that's really important. What makes my food tour company different from your food tour company? Mm -hmm. um, and I think certainly, you know, amazing guides has always been, um, you know, like the industry-based food tour guides has always been something that we've been proud of, great training. And so, mm -hmm. and that continues in the online world. And so what have you learned from this experience that you think could help others? I think, um, you know, why weren't we all doing online cooking experiences a year ago? And, okay, you know, they're not the big money spinner that some people present them as currently, mm -hmm. um, but when there's not a lot of money to go around, um, they're, they're certainly helping, and it's certainly something that we're, we're learning about and growing. So I would always be thinking, like, well, what if this all changes? Like, what, what do we do? Like what do we? What can we do now to set us up for the future? And yeah, we could have been running cooking classes, you know, a year ago, and and be figuring that out. But and and so I would be thinking now, you know, kind of, in a sense, like what if travel doesn't return? It's not as it, it it's still going to get worse than you think it's going to get. You know, mm -hmm. it's almost like or, and so hopefully there is obviously an upswing, but I think we're quite optimistic constantly because we need to be in this situation. So I would think, well, what, you know, what if this drags out longer or if it doesn't return in the way that we, it's not like before, mm -hmm. you know? So how can you hedge your bets? I would say that's really important. You know, it's, it's so critical to start growing that email list. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, that would be, I, I, that would be my main one, to be honest. Like, you know, I know every yeah. kind of business guru says that, but it's like, you know, the Facebook algorithm will change and, and you're done. Well, I guess that's the third one, right? It's like, how can you keep serving those current people who love your brand? Yeah. You know, if someone loves the Vara Tours currently or previously, we could only serve them when they came to Europe. So how can we serve them in other ways, whether it's a, a, a recipe book or, or a cooking class or something like that? Because it's true. They're all, you know, sell them more, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and tapping into that network and maybe asking them to invite friends like and family mm -hmm. and say, hey, let's do, you yeah. know, what, what are some other ways that you try to get the word out? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the challenge because I think one of the things with online, you know, um, as a lot of other businesses, uh, you set up your marketing funnels based on your business, right, which is uh, people traveling to Europe. So you have blog content about Europe and people find you and they book your tour. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, which is one of uh, the funnels for Devour, and it's all about where to eat in Spain or Madrid or whatever it is. So people aren't looking for that content anymore. Um, so suddenly when you're trying to sell these things, you have to really go out and find the people and, and speak to them. And that's actually, you know, that's hard. It means that you're, um, you're having to build new marketing funnels. So I would say, obviously, think about all the different marketing funnels you can build when the times are good. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the reality. And, I, and, and in some ways, I'm kind of enjoying it because I like uh, the challenge of, of, you know, how can we t connect with these people and tell them that this is something good, this is something interesting. Well, I've got email, I've got social. What, how can I do word of mouth? How can I get PR? Um, and, you know, if your USP is something that isn't a headline, you know, we have the best guides or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's hard to get, say, PR. So I think about all the typical things and maybe I guess if you can build your product in a way, which is what Airbnb is good at, they come out with these crazy experiences that, mm -hmm. you know, apart from the, you know, when it came to the, the in-person experiences, I think I read somewhere with all these weird ones they came out with first you know, mm -hmm. four years ago when they started the online, when the, the in-person experience, like nobody ever booked those. They're all booking the paella cooking class. Mm -hmm. But the PR of coming out with that stuff first is is critical. And then people just go off and book like the food tour or three Airbnb. They're not booking like, you know, sushi knife samurai warriors or something. I mean, I think every business owner has to, mm -hmm. has to f decide, you know, that financial equation is the first one. And then you have to say, well, like, okay, well, what's the, you know, what do I want personally? Um, how long will I, um, this is how long the money will last, but if, you know, that's your money. So yeah. how long do you want to hold on for? And obviously any income, any revenue will, will extend that. Um, and we just don't know what's going to happen. So you're yeah. trying to get through the uncertainty. And so, yeah, any revenue is good. And I think for me, obviously online is revenue. That's yeah. good. But it's also, um, it's also learning, right? It's learning about your business that, 
I sometimes think, I hope it's, this is that story where when they tell, you know, my story or many food tour tourism uh, operator stories, it's like, we hung on, we hustled, even though it was hard and we're working more for a fraction of the money, but thank God we did because Everything we learned about like SEO, if we didn't know about SEO or email marketing or about online experiences made our business even stronger, you know, two years down the line. And I hope it's that story. And that's kind of the story we're betting on, right? The other story is like, oh my God, what did I waste my life for two years? I should have given up, you know. But um, but I believe in the first story. And so I think that's why we've decided to keep, you know, keep grinding. Um, and yeah. that's a personal decision. There's no right or wrong there. Well, you said, you mentioned the word optimism earlier, and that really mm -hmm. resonates because I think that's super important to stay optimistic because everything we're getting from the news is just like doom and gloom and, yeah. you know, going outside, looking around, seeing everyone in masks. Like, there's just so much to uh, deter our optimism, I guess. Mm -hmm. But that's another mm -hmm. way that virtual experiences can come in is to increase that optimism. Like, hey, we mm -hmm. can still interact with people. We can still, you know, to have experiences from our homes. We just understand who our who our target market is. You know, they're they're people. If I take a tour, um, it's you know, or if I lead a tour, they're the people that I would. You know, they're the same people. I just know their rhythms. I know their needs. You know, mm -hmm. they're they're curious. They want to eat great food. They don't want to go to the tourist traps. Um, yeah. They want to understand a place. Um, so I would say we kind of have more of that than than maybe the data. Because, you know, I think a lot of companies didn't really need it because just so much tourism, right? It was always yeah. flowing in. As long as you were being found, you were being booked. Um, but yeah. as, it, as it gets harder, I guess, you know, you get more, you have to get more focused. Yeah, so you think data is becoming more important since mm -hmm. everything is kind of shifted online. and Because suddenly when you're not getting the bookings, the, the easy bookings, mm -hmm. um, you're like, oh, well, you know, how, how, you know, how do we find the people? How do we communicate with them? And so you have to suddenly work different muscles that other industries have often worked or other companies have, are good at. Mm -hmm. uh, but we just, you know, in travel, uh, we probably haven't been as, as good at it as we should have been, I mm -hmm. think. Um, and I think there's a lot of companies still that don't have online booking systems or it's like send me an email. So, yeah. you, know, uh, there's a, you know, there's a huge amount of, of smaller operators that are still working in a very simple way. So I think... That's hard for a lot of people because it is kind of overwhelming, a lot of this stuff. And you mentioned, like, this is a great time to learn things, but it's also kind of can be bewildering mm -hmm. because, like, well, what do I learn first? Do I learn SEO? Do I learn email marketing? Do I learn better social media stuff? Do I start a YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's, that's overwhelming for people, for a lot of people. We can get very much in our own heads about, like, we're selling. Uh, and thinking about our situation or thinking about the customer's situation from our point of view, like I'm going to market to this person, you know, when do we think they might book? And so, well, just put yourself in the person's shoes. Like if you've ever booked an Airbnb experience online, mm -hmm. like were you booking three weeks ahead? Does that like, does that sound something like you would do or not? Or would you book at the last minute? Like what is your headspace around it? And that's your client's headspace or your potential customer's headspace. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, if people are have to, if people did say like gathering friends together or people, they're going to organize in advance, maybe three weeks out, because they're going to like coordinate. Hey, find the people who might want to log on at that time. Mm -hmm. um, but if I was, you know, came to Friday and I'm like, I don't know what we're going to do this weekend. What should we do? Oh, look, this is interesting cooking class or this interesting experience. Let's do that. You know, then if you're communicating a day before, like be in that, be in that headspace. You know, like no plans this weekend, kind of mm -hmm. thing. So I think you have to really put yourself in, in the headspace of the client. I think also when you, it would be very easy and we all do it when you say take a, a, an on, let's say you take an Airbnb experience because mm -hmm. you want to see what it's like. There's, you're coming at it from different ways. You're like, oh, well, what's their camera set up? How is there this? How is there that? Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of the surface level and you're kind of learning how they're running their pasta cooking class or their whatever it is. But I think it's really important to be conscious on that other level, on that sort of deeper level of like, um, of just that, like, am I looking forward to this? Do I feel nervous about being on camera? Do I, you know, as a, as a, as a guest? Do I, all those kind of things that, that you're feeling as a guest, you have to be very conscious of them because that's going to feed into your marketing. That's going to feed into how you set up the experience, you know, or is it like the day of and I'm like, oh, I don't really want to do this or, you know, why did I book that thing? You know, maybe you allow last minute change. I, I don't know, but mm -hmm. it's very easy to, because it's so new to think I'm going to do this because I'm going to learn how they've got their camera set up. But it's like, that's the easy stuff yeah 
figure, you know, get the pulse of kind of how you're feeling about it because that's how your customers are feeling. Well, is there anything else that uh, maybe we didn't talk about or you want to touch on before we kind of wrap up? No. Uh, good luck to everyone who's watching. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a wild west out there right now, which, you know, I sometimes do think like 10 years in the future, what will the stories they tell about this time, about, you know, say a very specific thing like tours and activities, for example. Obviously, there'll be a lot of stories about, you know, the world and changes that are happening. But it's like, what will be the story they, t the stories they tell? Will it be, like I said, the people who hung on and all oh, that was, you know, why'd you hang on? Or the people who said, no, I'm going to hang on because there's something here. It will come back, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to, it's going to, it's going to kind of suck a little bit mm -hmm. for a little while, but that's okay. And, but if you, you know, have that belief uh, and you can ha you know, hang on, um, maybe the story they will tell is like, wow, you came out stronger than ever. Hey again, and thanks for listening to this interview. If it's inspired you to create and launch your own online tours or experiences, we want you to know that we're here to help. Virtual Tour Business is an online coaching program that covers everything you need to know about creating, launching, and selling an online experience or an online tour. It's there for innovative tour business owners looking to generate revenue, looking to leverage your existing skills in to serve customers in brand new ways, and for those who are looking for purpose-driven work in these times of uncertainty. We're here to help you skip the tech headaches and overwhelm and give, re give you the tools, tactics, and strategies that are actually working in this space. To learn more, you can visit onlinetourismacademy.com to get started today, or join us for one of our free workshops at beabetterguide.com, where we'll give you even more inspiration, tools, techniques, and practical advice on this topic. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, and if you did enjoy this series, feel free to share with a friend or colleague. We'll see you next time.